Hello and welcome to another episode of Pixelated Zen Plays. Today we're checking out EverQuest 2 free to play version. I tried it when it first came out, but I ended up stopping playing because of a few reasons. Namely the fact, this was my original free to play guy, and as you can see he's a dwarf. And dwarfs are alright, but I couldn't play the race that I really wanted, the Rotonga. There's something about rat people, if you've watched any of my other videos, you probably know that I just love them. Well, uh, EverQuest 2 recently updated their free-to-play model, and they changed a few things. They got rid of some of the restrictions. Now, as a free-to-play, you have access to all races except for the True Blood Vampire knockoff race. And the you have also have access to all the classes except for the Beast Lord race, which was recently added. And since I have no interest in either of those things, or Beast Lord class, I should say, since I have no interest in either of those things, I'm just going to go ahead and start playing a new character. As you can see, I have a 21 Dwarf Berserker right here. He's the highest level I have, so I have not gotten very far in this game. I have a level 10 Rotonga Necromancer, and a level 13 Rotonga Swashbuckler, which I actually kind of liked, and I may go back to at some point. But for now, let's create a new character. We're going to try a... I was going to go with a Priest Inquisitor, which sounded kind of cool, but then I heard about the Mage Conjurer, or I'm sorry, the Mage Illusionist. Uh, supposedly you get a pet that is a copy of yourself, which sounds too cool to pass up. So we may end up uh, re-rolling as a Priest Inquisitor, but we'll see how things go. Alright, well, we don't want to be anything but a male Rotonga. And that skin looks awful, so let's go in here. Nope. I love their randomize all option. Got some nice options on here. Let's change the size, be a bit larger. Lock that. I do like the fur type, so let's lock that. And then randomize some stuff here. Oh, I did not keep the fur color. I kept the fur pattern. All right, well, that's why we look a little jaundiced here. There we go. Let's keep the fur color. And do some more randomizing. Ooh, smaller ears, got some nice earrings, cool eyes here, oh, that's epic, but I've already got a Rotonga with that, so, close, but no cigar, I do want some earrings, I think, there we go, you know what, that'll work, let's call that made, and where are we going to start? We're going to start, we got Nariak, Kelethi, uh, which is all up in the the trees and stuff. That'd probably be a major pain in the ass. Gorowin, which I've actually tried once before. I do not like the weird lizard dragon people in this game. It looks odd. So what we're going to do is either going to do Nariak or New Hollis. And Nariak is darker. New Hollis is very bright and snowy. So I think we're going to go with that since I think that'll stream better. Nariak is where I've played most of my Rotonga, but New Hollis, I think, like I said, is brighter. I think it'll it'll create videos that are a little more vibrant and friendly to watch. So let's check that out. All right, we're going to need a name for our Rotonga Illusionist, and we are also going to go on Antonia Bale. Let's check out what they got for random here. Buffalo. <laughs> Scoof? Scoob? Scood. Scoob. Hmm. Scoor. Ah. That character. Space cannot be used in the name. Good to know. Let's try Scoor. Probably not going to work, but we're going to give it a shot. Yeah, it worked. Nobody picked it. I guess it's kind of a weird name. But I'm a weird guy, so it works for me. The load times in this game are a little long, but generally you're not loading too much other than when you actually load in-game. Um, and then, you, you know, if you go through a teleporter or something like that. So it's really not too big a deal from what I've experienced so far. Okay, upgrade to gold. Later, maybe. Do we want to have our uh, UI set up like any of our other characters? Which is so cool that, you know, if you've got a character where the UI is good, you can just copy it over. But I don't have anything like that right now. 
Uh, this, the interface, it's a little uh, tutorial looking thing. Let's go ahead and get out of that. Basic movement, yes, yes, yes. Okay, new quest, the great challenge. Uh, this is a cool little thing that happens with this game. When you start up a new character, uh, it lets you know that if you get to level 20 in under 14 days, you get a title called Knight of Bale or whatever server you're on. So that's kind of cool. I'm, uh, I might do that. Quests. See, these are the different quest indicators. Uh, that It's, it's kind of unique in this sense that, yes, there are floating items above the heads, but at least they're not just a you know, yellow exclamation mark, yellow question mark, uh, where so many games recently have copied WoW in that aspect. Granted, EverQuest 2 is a bit older, so. All right, let's go ahead and get in the game here. Yes, 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 quest journal, and welcome. All right, here's us, and the game's stuttering a little bit as it kind of loads New Hollis, but that should stop pretty soon. All right, let's go ahead and start. Who are you? Oh, I, I saved some people from the sea. That's great. I fell into a deep sleep the moment I hit dry land, and she's been taking care of me ever since. What kind of... Like, this isn't a house or even a hovel. This is just a, like, I don't know, like a half tent that she threw me into. Even though there's like a hovel thing over there, uh, looks like there's an entire group of people over there, and she just left me on the beach freezing. That's great. I do love the way EverQuest 2 does their dialogue. This like chat box that kind of hovers around and you can rotate. It just looks really cool. I've never seen anything else like it. So. Let's see, uh, attacked by the orcs. Okay, let's attack them back. That's true, it hits the noggin, could not keep me down. Okay, so I gotta go talk to Yasha Redblade. And I'll accept that quest. Let's go ahead and start over here. What's this? This is sprint. Duration, one minute. Yeah, let's give it a shot and see what the cooldown's like. That's not too bad. Ooh, mini ding. That's interesting. Every 10% experience you gain, your health and power will be replenished completely. This is known as a mini ding. Excellent. I like that. Here, let's go ahead and make a new tab over here. And all we're going to allow in here is private. Private chat. Because... That's all I really want while we're, uh, and this is also NPC chat and things like that. And this keeps the chat log from getting cluttered up with crap that we don't care about. Here's Yasha Redblade. All right, quest reward. 13 copper. Look at me limbering up here. Okay, that would be great. Trainer Rag Ragenhild Stonefist. She's east at the end of the ship's hall. I'll go speak with her right now. Ooh, and I'll get a trusty wand. That's better than a shifty wand. You don't want to get a wand that's like, ah, I'm out. That looks like a big big monster. I don't want to fight him. Okay, this is learning about collections. Let's go ahead and just do this real quick. Because I think, <clears throat> I think we get something for it. Yep. Inventory. Yay. Okay. So there's our bags, which is actually quite a few bags. Uh, meager harvesting bag. So, right, that's where we'll put gathered items in, I guess. Interesting. All right, learn about collections now. Thanks for the information. Now get out of my face. And here's Ragonhild Stonefist, the combat trainer. Basics of combat. Okay. Nearby sparring partners, huh? Okay, yeah, it's going to keep popping up all these stupid things that we don't care about because, I mean, honestly, 
combat in these MMOs is, is fairly straightforward. Ooh, treasure chest. Let's open the shit out of that. Entrance Adept. That's what I'm talking about. Here. We got loot. Okay. We got treasure chest. After defeating an opponent, you might see a treasure chest. Click on it to see what's inside. Got to level 2. Hell yeah. And spells. Spells are automatically added to your hotbar. Press K to see a full list of your abilities. And when they say spells are added to your hotbar, they mean only until your hotbar is full. And if you don't have another one just waiting, then they won't keep going. You'll have to go into K and pull them out. Okay, new abilities, yada, yada, yada. Yes, there's many tiers of abilities, but as a free-to-play, I believe you can only go to Adept. Uh, maybe Expert, I'm not 100% sure on that, but we'll find out as we play. So what did we get? We got Personae Reflection, which is the summon pet ally. And we got... We got something that doesn't want to show us what it is. Oh, there it is. Paranoia. Uh, inflicts 7 to 10 mental damage on the target. Stuns the target. Epic targets gain an immunity to stun. And resistibility increased against higher uh, targets higher than level 31. Alright. So we did get a book called Entrance, which mesmerizes the target. So that's actually for our class. So let's go ahead and learn the shit out of that ability. Alright. So we're going to summon... Actually... Is there a cooldown on this? How long is Last until cancelled. So yeah, that's a permanent pet. So let's go ahead and summon our pet and see how that looks. Excellent. That's really cool. I hope as I change gear, he changes to look more like me. Supposedly he's got uh, many of my same abilities and things, so that's pretty cool actually. I have unread mail. Welcome to EverQuest 2. Welcome to Norath, yada yada yada, ha ha ha, okay. Brew Day Festival. Let's keep that for now. Uh, let's not take this poll at the moment. We'll do that later. Okay, I've proven my ability. Report back to Yasha Redblade. Which is this chick over here. And see, this, this line right here is my pet's abilities. So let's actually go ahead and see if we can't change that a bit. Yeah, there we go. I believe there's a way to actually move this whole thing. Allow draggable? No, not icons. Hmm. Text style. Uh, minimal text. Ah, uh, yeah, there we go. And I believe there's a way to move these things. There we go. Okay. Got it set up kind of nicely, you know, for an older game. I defeated my opponent, and I get my trusty wand. Now my muscles are not stiff. Uh, let's go attack the orcs, huh? There are orcs attacking. Fall upon the Rygor Centurions. They are crushing the barricade southeast of me. Return to me when you've done this right away. But first, I'm going to equip my... Amazing trusty wand. And let's go ahead and change the window settings for the mini map. Let's go ahead and make it invisible, unless I'm hovering over it. And bam, look at that. Pretty. Because there's a lot on my screen right now, and I really don't have uh, enough room for everything. So, okay. You can see this slight blue color. That's where the actual quest is supposed to be. Um, but being on the white background, white, you know, of the snow, it's almost impossible to see. So that kind of sucks. But let's start casting and see what our partner does. He's casting stuff too. There you go. Oh, shit. Yeah, there's somebody's uh, earth elemental there. But he's not going to get much to do. Oh, that motherfucker's going back. Oh, we killed him. Good. Okay, we'll let that guy deal with them. We'll do this. Let's do a confusion and see what the hell happens. Oh, he died anyway. Let's try this guy in trance. Bam. You see that up there? That means he's speaking in orcish, which I don't know. So I can't actually see what he's saying. However, over the course of the game, you can learn other languages, such as Draconic and Orcish and things like that, which will actually allow you to see what the NPCs are screaming, 
And I mean, it's not uh, a major thing in the game, but it's really cool that that's in there. It kind of adds to the role-playing aspect of it. And I do like the role-playing when I don't have to try too hard. <laughs> um, when you have to go out of your way and find a group and find this and that, it, it becomes a little too much for me sometimes um, because I'm lazy. I don't know if you guys noticed that by now. Oh, let's hide that. What the hell? I don't know what's going on there, but I did kill many of the attacking orcs. And I leveled up to level 3, and I got a powered orb, which uh, goes in some kind of a slot. Maybe it's an offhand? Yeah, we're going to give that a shot. Okay, okay yes, uh, murderous meat slabs they are. Even now, another wave of them may be crashing upon our shores, and she wants me to kill some more. Ooh, someone else in mine. Okay. Need to replace the barricades. Alright, let's accept that quest. And uh, go gather planks of wood, which are going to be in places like this. Which means down here by the shore. So let's go explore. Where's my pet? There he is. Running along behind me. Ah, withered driftwood. Okay. So, what the hell is this? What did I just get? Brain Burst. Applies migraine on termination. Inflicts 9 to 12 mental damage. And inflicts 4 to 5 mental damage on target instantly and every 6 seconds. Alright, let's try that, huh? Oh yeah, nice dot. I, I can deal with that. What I can't deal with is uh, usually in games when you want to use an item or talk to a person, you right click on it. In EverQuest, you left click. If you right click, you actually get uh, usually, say like a list of things you want to do, which is cool enough. Uh, it's nice to have that ability, but I'm so used to pressing right click in order to do anything that uh, remembering to left click in this game can be a little frustrating for me. All right, this is the harvesting tutorial. I don't think I'm actually getting the planks of wood that I need, but you see this little glowy thing right here with the question mark? Uh, if anybody's played Rift, they'll know that this is a collectible item. And yes, it seems a little bit weird. See, I just added it to, the, it was a feather and I added it to my feather collection. Some items have multiple collections they can be a part of. Um, anyway, so what I was saying is you may notice that from Rift. And the reason for that is that uh, one of the main contributors to Rift actually worked on EverQuest, uh, I believe both 1 and 2. I can't remember off the top of my head exactly. But uh, that would be why you see some similarities between the two games. And oddly enough, I know that, um, that EQ2 is older than Rift, but I actually like the art a little bit better. Um, there's something about the the shininess of Rift's models that kind of, it just really kind of turns me off about the, to the game for some reason. I don't know why, but uh, everything looks kind of plasticky. So, let's get some roots here. We do need to find these wooden planks. I'm probably in the complete wrong area, but nah, no big deal. We got other stuff to do for this uh, crafting quest, the tutorial. Nothing found on these stunted roots. POS roots, that's all I gotta say. I've gathered two out of three roots, and is that three out of three roots? No. That was a nothing. Come on, three out of three roots. You bastard roots, just give me a root. I found a yarrow. Alright, well, that's not exactly a, a root, but I guess I'll take it. Uh, withered driftwood, we've already been using that. Hmm. That's a plank over there, but I don't think it's the kind of planks we need. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I probably shouldn't leave my guy alone, even though he's kicking ass. Man, I don't even need to do anything. Okay, creature den. Do we need to catch it, capture some creatures? I think, yeah, rawhide pelts. Three rawhide leather pelts. That's instantly done. Excellent. Might as well continue gathering. Because we can actually use this stuff, um, not just for the tutorial. Come on. 
All right, you know what? Screw that, Dan. We're done with that. Let's go check out. I don't think it's back there. So let's start making our way back to uh, where we got the quest. We need to get some other uh, harvestable things on the way anyway, so. That's awesome. Very soon we'll be getting, uh, ooh, hit me right in the face. Anyway, very soon we'll be getting heroic opportunities, which are one of the cooler things about the combat in this game. Oh, shit. That's not good. Um, so heroic opportunities are kind of like self-combos. Um, ooh, orc smuggling requisition, which is a quest item. And then fiery carnelian. I don't even know what the hell that is, but... Okay, let's go ahead and kill this. Okay, what are these things? Ice-covered stones. We don't need any ice-covered stones, so let's ignore that for now. Got all the roots we needed? No, we still need one root. So, bam, root. All right, got all of our roots. Let's continue our little runaround. Got the creature in. We got all our creatures. We got some mushroom guys. They're not gonna attack us though. So let's go grab some windblown shrubs since we need three. And it's probably gonna take us an hour to gather all the shrubs we need. A black coffee bean. Sure. Uh, we need Jum Jum from the shrub. Okay, I didn't get any Jum Jum. I don't even think that's uh, something I should be saying in public, but another collectible. I do like collectibles. You can also get uh, racial specific collectibles, which it's kind of weird to explain for me because I haven't played it too much, but let's say you're fighting vampires. Well, as you fight more vampires, you may get uh, a certain drop off them that you can use and it's collectible. And then it'll tell you that you need a certain amount of different vampire body parts. So, uh, vampire teeth, va vials of vampire blood, things like that. Once you've gotten all of the uh, pieces for the quest, you actually get a super powerful ability for that one race. So, you'll get an, uh, they, and they all stack up. So, let's say you have the super powered ability. Uh, destroy vampires. So you use it and you'll do massive damage to any vampire you hit with it. Well, then later on you get the superpowered ability destroy orcs. Well, it's the same ability, so you can use it on either a vampire or an orc at that point, and more and more and more. So I wouldn't sit there and farm them because that takes a very, very long time, but you will fight some of the same type creature types, you know, throughout the game. So don't sit there and farm the vampire stuff, but once you get it, it's going to really help you out uh, anytime you're fighting any kind of a vampire mob because you can just hit that one button. So we did get our planks of wood. We still need shrubs, lead, tin, and some more jum jum. Ah, I got another jum jum. We just need one more jum jum. Ah, we got it. Okay. Fish up some sunfish. Let's go check that out real quick. I believe the way it works in EQ2 is you've got to find a school of sunfish. Yep. Find a school of fish, and then can't see target. Okay. Stupid school of sunfish. Be seen. Okay. Let's try over here. There we go. Okay. So now he's gonna fish. Nothing found. Excellent. And you can see fishing in this is just like gathering anything else. Uh, there's no special mini game. There's no you know crazy thing going on. Um, which is fine because fishing in most MMOs is pretty crap. Uh, they try and make it fun with a little bit of a mini game, but often it's too simplistic to be actually fun. Um, the last time I enjoyed fishing in a game, I mean, when I played Ultima Online, I really enjoyed fishing. I loved the fishing and cooking aspect of the, that game. Um, but then the next time I really enjoyed fishing was when I uh, was playing... EverQuest 11, or I'm not EverQuest 11, um, Final Fantasy 11, the online uh, version of Final Fantasy. 
it was a blast. And you actually had a chance to fish up uh, weird, crazy creatures. And sometimes those creatures were way above your level, and sometimes they weren't. So, you know, sometimes you'd immediately have to run. But uh, it kept you on your toes, kept you paying attention to the fishing. And it was a, it was a fun way to fish. Not great, not perfect by any means. Uh, but one of the better ones I've seen in an MMO. Now, EverQuest 2 does make it up for its uh, kind of lackluster gathering in the crafting. You know, because gathering is gathering. But the crafting itself is pretty in-depth, and one of the better crafting systems in an MMO. I actually enjoy Fallen Earth's crafting uh, quite a bit more, but, you know, that's just because Fallen Earth has some amazing crafting. Oh, did we get this guy? We did get this guy, because he punched me in the face. Hot bars. Level four. Okay, we can add a new hot bar by right clicking and selecting add new hot bar. Magi Shielding. Increases max health of caster by 15. And increases focus and defense by 2. Mitigation versus physical damage by 45. And mitigation versus caster or er, of caster versus elemental, noxious, and arcane by 99. Hell yeah, let's pop that on. Ooh, that's pretty. I like that. Let's see. Um, set frozen tundra south of me. Okay, so I gotta go plant the makeshift barricade. Oh, and then they added this so I can actually just click on it there. That's really cool. Okay. So I'm gonna go place this barricade over here, I believe. Yep. But first, I'm gonna get this collection note. Because I'm addicted to collecting. All right, see, that's the shell collection, and uh, I've got two shells now, which is excellent. Bam, look at that. We're good to go. Let's go turn this back in. we got to keep an eye out for tin clusters and lead clusters, but I believe those are going to be when I start climbing the uh, ladders over in the north. I've been glad to help. Light a signal atop the cliff to the east. Sounds easy, I'll do it. All right, so we've got to scale the ladder and light the ship, and it looks like we're going to get some kind of a table or something for our trouble. Oh, they want me to do it over here. See, I almost ran off for no apparent reason. So let's go, ah, there's the rope ladder. Let's go use this thing. There's some of our spell effects. Interesting. It's showing our spell effects and our mail over here, but it's also showing the spell effects over here. So I'll have to mess with that sometime. Um, see if I can't do that. So the way you operate these ladders is actually pretty intuitive. You just run straight into it. I remember when I first played, I sat there for oh, quite quite a bit longer than I'd care to admit, trying to right-click on it and click on it and checking my bags to see if there was some way I, some item I had to scale it. And all I had to do was run straight into it. So sometimes I do not make the best decisions. Now, see, if these are over here, why do I need these? So I'm going to have to look into that. Maybe just take those off my bar. Because pointless object is pointless. And it just takes up space. Oh, shit. Level 4. He's serious business now. Fragment of, of terrain. What does that do? Ah, nothing. Nothing. So it's looking like a monster of the same level as me will ha be a white name, and a monster of uh, slightly under my level will be blue. I'm only level four, so I'm not high enough to know what a monster far under my level would look like. Uh, but maybe a, a lighter blue, maybe? I don't know. Oh, that was a really cool spell on his part. So let's go collect this. And then uh, you saw the guard at the camp. I could actually attack him if I wanted, if I was insane. Oh, another feather. Um, and he was a bright red, his name. So I'm guessing that is the, you know, much higher than you. Don't attack him unless you're an idiot. Uh, notification marker. I do like that my pet is a copy of me. And I, like I said, I really hope that he changes looks with, uh, with my character changing looks. Because that would be like the coolest pet system in the game. And here's that signal fire. 
All right, I lit the signal fire. Oh, oh, okay. So yeah, they're gonna ambush me. Didn't, did not realize that. My pet's actually doing okay, so we're just gonna kill everything here. Bam! Ooh, see? Here's a, like I was telling you earlier, we got an orc spine. So this will give us a quest. So we examine it, and we uh, can get a book on orc society, which will, I think it'll allow us to, let's see, uh, basic understanding of the text used by the chosen foe. So it's kind of a, just a primer on the orcs. And then we get a trophy. So that's if we get all of the orc pieces. But look at that. That's so many pieces that uh, we're not going to just sit here and try and farm it up. Because we'd be here for years. So what we're going to do is just go around and do what we can. And see I just got another feather, but it was a sparrow feather and I'd already collected it. So it was gray and it did not open up the collection tab. Ooh, but I did get a new shell. I only need one more shell to complete that uh, collection, which is exciting. Scattered ore. We do need ore. Let's go ahead and minimize this. Can we minimize that? We can click that off, though. I wonder if this scattered ore will give us both tin and lead clusters. We'll have to find out. Definitely giving us tin. So, so far all I'm getting from the scattered ore is tin, but uh, lead may just be a, a more random drop, or it may require a different kind of node. I got five leaded loam. Okay. Let's start making our way back down. We do want to reach level 20 in under 14 days. Uh, so what we're most likely going to do, you guys haven't seen the um, advancement, uh, alternate advancement stuff yet. Um, ooh, another chest. Ice chip bracelet, can't use it, okay. So you guys haven't seen the alternate advancement stuff yet, but uh, I'm probably not, what you can do is you can actually set it to where a certain amount of your experience goes to alternate advancement. So what some people will do is they'll wait till end game and then they'll, you know, since they're not getting any normal XP, they'll make all that XP go to alternate advancement. But then you're behind by the time you get to end game. So what I usually do is I start uh, at a 60-40. 60% 60 experience, 40% alternate advancement. And with this character though, I want to reach level 20 in 14 days. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait until level 20 to put it to 50% alternate advancement for a little while. Now, I'm going down this ladder. I assume that you just press forward to go down, but if I die, uh, we're going to laugh at me. Oh, yeah. You just press forward and he latches on. No big deal. Alternate advancement. There we go. Oh. I keep going back and forth here. Okay, so as a Rotonga, you get all of these automatically. And then... Every so many levels, you can pick another thing. So uh, racial traditions are available every 10 levels, and you can pick one of these traditions each time. And then uh, every nine levels, you get a focus effect. And then illusionist training, every so many levels, 14, 24, 34, etc., uh, I get one of these. So there's also the alternate advancement, which is like a talent tree here. And then there are different sections you can put your alternate advancement points in. So this is the Enchanter, Illusionist Tree, Shadows, and then Heroic, which requires the Destiny of Velius expansion, which I don't have. Then there's also Trade Skill, alternate advancement, Prestige, alternate advancement, which is again requires Destiny of Velius, and the Trade Skill Prestige, which requires the Change of Eternity. And I don't have any of those. This is the Experience Slider. Uh, this is where you would decide, well, it's not working right now, but this is where you would decide how much of your experience you want to go to alternate advancements. Oh my. Clone just shot down there. Ice covered stone. Maybe that's where I'm supposed to get lead. That is where I'm supposed to get lead. So I'm glad I didn't just sit there farming those other things. 
Come on, we are almost done with two quests here. That should get us to the next level. Hell, this Flame On quest might get us to the next level. Ugh, of course it didn't get it. Got three rough Malachite. And I'm running out of room already. Luckily, they did um, get rid of the restrictions on bag slots and the number of quests you can have at one time. The number of quests you can have at one time, I think they realized, was just stupid. I mean, the game's all about having many, many, many different quests and different ways to level up. And if you limit that, that's one of the special things about your game, and people aren't going to experience that, and they're less likely to uh, subscribe because of that. Now let's go turn in this harvesting and collecting. Disassembled storage box, yes please. All right, he thanked me, that's all he's got for me. Ooh, another crafty looking one right here. It's glowing green, so I don't know what that means. Got the shipwrecked scavenge table. Ah, heroic opportunities, we did level. And house items can be used to make your house or home. Okay, thank you. And thank you again. Ooh, I can get some invokers bracers. So all I gotta do is go to Regan Firebeard at Gwynevin's Cove. Oh, I can use the fairy craft. Okay, I know exactly what to do there. But first, let's see what this guy's doing. Hmm. Let's sell some of this useless stuff we don't have, well, any use for. Okay, Bloodstained Bat Fang. I don't think we can do anything with that. Nope. Clamshell we already have. Fiery Carnelian, which is a gemstone, apparently. Uh, we still got all that stuff we never put into our character, so let's uh, let's try that. Oh, we never actually, I don't think we, there we go, begin to study. There, see, now it's out of our bags, so we don't have to worry about it. And we need to study this, oh yeah, I forgot to do that. Alright, so let's equip this, and where are our bracers here? Equip that. Yes, a tune, which is a soul bind. Trying your hand at making something out of them? Sure. Uh, why don't you just jump in and try? Handbook of the Ravens of the North. Okay, so I need a copy of the Lucky Charm recipe over beside him and scribe it into my recipe book, then grab some coal from the sack. I also need one of the tin clusters and lead clusters that I harvested earlier. Uh, make sure I have them in my bags. Okay. There's the recipe. Get a sack of coal. Do I have any of the ore from earlier? Lead cluster and tin cluster. Okay, I got enough, so let's go ahead and scribe this into my book. And, oh, okay, trade skills. Okay, so this is very easy to make. Let's go ahead and create the lucky wolf paw. We need one of each of these and some crude, oil, uh, crude coal, not crude ore. And this is where we change the quantity. Let's go ahead and begin. Ah, oh, crap, I forgot about how all this works. So, uh, there will be problems that pop up occasionally. Maybe only on harder things. Okay, see? And then we'll have to use things to uh, counter certain problems. But I don't think we're going to have to worry about that. Uh, at least in this video, yeah. Look, we created it just fine. Uh, Lucky Wolf's Paw, handcrafted. Gives us some nice stats. Maybe not for us. Oh, increase the speed of the caster. Okay. That's what activated. Okay, so I could repeat that same thing if I wanted. Um, I can also go to my recipes, but that is pretty much all I needed, I believe. Lucky Wolf Spa. look up a tutor later. For now, we need to hunt orcs for smuggling requisitions to study. So let's go back to this first place and just kill a bunch of orcs. You, sir. Okay, so it looks like the green means that he's even lower, uh, and the gray looks like he's useless to me. He's not going to give me any XP, anything like that. Hey, I found an orc heart. That's what I'm talking about. Where is it? I'll find it in a sec. Maybe it just automatically went into my uh, learn section. Oh yeah, I'm not using my heroic opportunities. Okay, and then use this. Ah, see he died too fast. 
Okay. So the way the heroic opportunity works is you use it, and then over here there'll be a list of uh, attacks you can do to continue the chain. And if you continue the chain, um, you can actually. Oh, okay. So let's let's try it with this guy. Okay, so we've done this, and now that's flashing, so we can use this. Ah, these guys aren't living long enough. I'll have to show you when we actually fight some guys that uh, live for more than 10 seconds. Is this not where I need to be to learn this? Or to, to find these books? They might not be giving me the books since these guys are so low. I might need to move around the island a little bit. Oh, never mind. It's just a low drop rate. Haha, achievement unlocked, orc killer. Bitches. I uh, personally love achievements. I don't like them like some people like them, where, you know, the entire reason to play a game is the achievements, and that if it doesn't have achievements, it's not as interesting to me. Uh, that's not the case. I think that, um, you know, me, like anyone else, I like to, to win. I like to have uh, little things that says, ah, oh, you did a good job. And that's what achievements are to me. If I'm, I don't go out searching for them, I never try and find them. But if I'm just wandering around doing stuff and all of a sudden, boom, I get an achievement, I'm awesome. Hey, why not? I like that. I like people telling me I'm awesome. We still haven't found another one of these damn things. I uh, found an orc spirit, so that's cool. Right, let's go over here and kill this guy. And then let's see what we got in our bags so far. Ah, another smuggling requisition. Okay, so we're supposed to have a heart. It might have just gone straight into that quest. Ah, see? Required by the quest, lore and legend orc. So that's, or an orc eye. So now we've examined this, begin to study, and that goes into our thing. Yep, now we just need skin, tooth, and an ear. So, honestly, it's pretty depraved. We're, we're murdering humanoids and collecting their body parts, which, you know, yes, sexy, but at the same time, some people might consider it wrong, I think. Another trade requisition. Did I just area loot? That's what that looked like. Um, this game did not used to have area loot. And <laughs> that's something I love in MMOs now. I want every game to have area loot. If I kill 12 guys, I should not have to click through 12 bodies just to loot all the stuff. Um, it's just kind of a pain in the ass. It doesn't need to be there. And games are figuring that out, I think. I am destroying shit. Look at this. At some point, I'm going to fight a higher level thing, and you guys are going to get to see... Ooh, treasure chest. Uh, and you guys are going to get to see how the heroic opportunities work. Paranoia adept. Yes, please. Got another orc spine as your charm. And an orc ear. That's what we've been looking for. Alright. You see what I mean? If we'd have just sat up there farming orcs... Um, it would we would have been getting the same rate, but we wouldn't have been getting anything else done. Now we're actually uh, trying to complete a quest and getting plenty of our orc stuff. Uh, some of the items are obviously harder to get. Um, when I first found the vampire one, uh, I found him in a cave, and there were tons of vampires that would respawn, and that was kind of difficult, um, especially since the quest only had me go in and kill some stuff, and I didn't actually get anything to even start the quest until, you know, I was on my way out. So, uh, I ended up, that's when I learned not to sit there and just keep uh, grinding, because I did it on that character. And it took me way more time than I wanted to spend in one place. Let's go ahead and check this stuff out. We got orc skin. Begin to study, please. And all we need is an orc tooth now. So, come on, orky orcs. 
Somebody give me a tooth before I find the last requisition. Now see, if I was a warrior, finding a tooth would be no big deal because I'd be, you know, hitting people in the face with a hammer. Uh, but, you know, as it is, I guess I'll deal with just casting things at them and hoping that I don't explode their heads. Which must be what's happening if I'm not finding teeth. Hey, hey, bastard, come back. Alright. Look at that, now I learned the orc tongue because I completed that quest. And I can actually hear what they're saying and understand it. He has failed. I think we can all admit to that. Come on, loot, loot. Maybe it's not area loot. Maybe it's very close area loot. I'm not sure. But I want to go ahead and finish up this last uh, orc thing. Uh, since it's just a tooth is all I need. But I know that that means that I'm going to end up spending... Far too long uh, grinding this tooth. <laughs> oh, an orc tooth right away. Let's get the hell out of here. Examine that. Begin to study. There we go. Not only did we level up to level 6, get a new spell, but we also got orc societies and a title. And we need to create... Uh, oh, not, <laughs> not open a new hotbar. Or not clear our hotbar. Okay, let's... Uh, we got a book, and if you read it, see, it's just story stuff. But that's cool. I'm going to save that for later. I'm not going to bore you guys with that. But I am going to... Let's see. Oh, any house type. It's a trophy, not a title. All right, that works for me. And then we did get Paranoia Adept. We currently only know Paranoia Apprentice, so let's, uh, let's learn the shit out of that one. Now... We need to move that because we want to put that one right above it. And then this can go above those. Which actually, we don't even need this damn thing. Let's just close that. We got this over here. And we haven't used it yet anyway. So, all right. I think that uh, that's going to be it for this episode of Pixelated Zen Plays EverQuest 2. Tune in next time. We're going to continue on. We're going to finish some of these quests over here, and then we're going to take the raft over to the other side of the island and start doing more questing. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more nostalgia videos, which are video game reviews from older to newer games that I have just never played before, and then also a ton of Let's Play videos. Thanks for watching.